The Pieces Lie Where They Fell by Evil Humor Chapter 11 Rex and Windbreaker Part 1 Rex As he and his new associates fled the quickly spreading fire, Rex pondered exactly what the blazing cracked courts he had been thinking in agreeing to join their expedition that was founded on instincts instead of facts, despite this mystical adventure being the result of said instincts. Regardless, he pulled the door open, a bit too hard as it came off its hinges, but that was besides the point. He waved Vittel, Windbreaker, and Vix Lee through, with the young couple running in tandem, Nightblade with his attention solely on Page-Turner, and almost running him over as a result. Biting back a rather scathing remark, Rex lifted his arm to his muzzle, as the fire continued to grow at an unnatural rate. The, although fires caused by ether-related sources were never to be treated as normal, from his long experience with the materials. Coughing into his arm, he dropped the door and rushed forwards into the clear mountain air, with the flames licking at his tail, plowing his head straight into the coughing griffin's side, which caused the latter to collapse into Vittel, who seemed to be trying to cough out a hairball by the sounds of things. Vix Lee seemingly healed herself by spitting out a large wad of spit onto the ground, with only the need to rub her throat as a consequence. Page Turner was the only one unharmed by the inferno, but her attention was turned to Nightblade, who was suffering the worst due to his nocturnal-based eyesight reeling from the brightness of the current event. The mare was using her magic to dab at his eyes, and with water gathered from a nearby rain collector, and a handkerchief with the Blade family insignia on the corner. Is everyone else okay? Rex grumbled from Windbreaker's side. The griffin's plumage was surprisingly comfortable, and he had to remind himself it would be improper to linger, and pushed himself upright. Define okay, Rexy, because I can't think all that straight, Vixley whined, running a hand through her hair. Sharing a look with Windbreaker that said both of them were thinking the same retort, Rex reminded himself that as the tallest member, she was the closest to the smoke, and thus the one they should be most worried about. I'm mostly okay, besides you barging into my side and then landing on her. Windbreaker ran a talon to his saddlebags, and let out a sigh as he felt the contents were no doubt intact. You okay, Vittel? You're heavy, she grumbled, using all three hands to push the griffin off her, which elicited a squawk of surprise from him. You two? I'm fine, but night's eyes, Paige muttered, her necklace dangling over the new gold necklace with the light green open book, matching her cutie mark. I'll be fine, Paige. The fact that the Knox pony responded with his eyes shut tight did nothing to ease her worries. You there, what in the blazes is going on? A couple of guards appeared, with the sky being filled with smoke. Proving to be of her character, Vix Lee found the remark funny and let out a chuckle. Do you have any idea about the fire, and are you all right? Yeah, we're mostly okay, Vix Lee said, while pointedly ignoring Windbreaker, Vittel, and his frantic pleading for her to be quiet. We saw this really sketchy unicorn stallion in there, right? Yeah, Paige seemingly picked up on what Vittel was planning. He seemed to be very nasty-minded, with that pocket knife he flashed around. Yes, and I heard a rather lot of anti-governmental comments from... What was his name again? Nightblade turned his head to Vittel while his eyes were shut. Sharp point, Vittel said while looking at the ground. He said it while swinging that switchblade in his dirty gray magic. And he had pale green eyes with a brown coat and a dark brown mane, Rex added feeling good at this deception and getting some retribution against the individual. Seemed to have some issues with us, for some odd reason, and tried to set the building on fire while we were in there. 
The guards looked at each of them before turning to face a seemingly sick griffin by how much he was squirming. "'Is everything okay, son?' the other guard asked, raising an eyebrow. "'Yes, everything is good!' Windbreaker shouted, causing everyone to wince as it was very clear that it was ingenuous which ran counter to the lie they had been building. He then started to cough, rubbing his throat. Everything is good. Nothing is wrong. Everything is true. He all but hacked out the last words, breaking down into the most believable coughing fit Rex had ever seen. As you can see, our pal isn't that well, so we should mosey on out of here, Vex Lee said, while slapping Windbreaker's back and guiding them down a nearby alleyway. Might as well. This fire isn't going out easily, and you should get further back, the first guard said, dismissing them with a wave of his wing. Thank you, sir. Bye bye Vixley smiled as she began to push the still-coughing griffin down the alleyway, with everyone else following behind them. Vittle quickly leaping ahead to take the lead, and Knight seemed to recover enough to follow in the rear, although he had to squint a lot. Once they had made their way deep into the alley, they let out a sigh of relief. Okay, that happened, Vixley said as she leaned against a wall. Now what? We keep moving, Vittle said, reaching into her pack and pulling out a map. I'm not sure if you were listening, but that thing spoke of this foe as being very lethal and in control of the nation's might. Así que para mantener nuestros pelos en tras. Creo que deberíamos salir muy rapidamente mientras todavo perdimos. Everyone gave her a blank look, with the vittle sighing into her hand. She said, in order to keep ourselves in one piece, we should do our best to get out of Canterlot while that is still an option for us, Rex answered, getting surprised looks. What? It's just another language. Or do you have trouble imagining that a diamond dog could understand more than a few words? What? No, Paige said, walking over to place a hoof on his shoulder. It's just how fast you understood it. I'm a librarian of the Great Library, and even I have trouble translating languages as fast as you do. I wish I had that knowledge, Windbreaker groaned, still massaging his throat could find so many more jobs if I knew how to speak another language. Yes, yes, Berniso is cool, but I think we're getting sidetracked about the whole fleeing for our lives, Vittle said with an annoyed tone. Now, I've gotten us some escape plans, and why would you need escape plans? Windbreaker asked, tilting his head as he proposed a very serious inquest into Vittle's character. Really? Vittle snapped, moving to glare at him. That's the most serious question you have? The only type of people I know that need an escape plan are those of questionable nature, Rex added in, causing the Owie's Odal to let out a strangled cry with very foul language in Berenuccio, leaving her mouth before she stopped and collected herself. Holding out a hand, she said, Okay, yes, I may be a bit of a con artist, but... So that is why you wished to learn where the Grand Library was, Knight interrupted her, with the Zodal glaring at the Knox pony. Look, I... You were going to steal from the Great Library? Rex gasped loudly, a hoof to her chest. That started off a massive argument from the couple and the admitted criminal, with Windbreaker and Rex doing their best to shut down the argument with their own opinions. It was all quickly brought to a halt when a high-pitched whistle caused all of them to cover their ears in pain, with Vix Lee moving her fingers out of her mouth. First my eyes, now my ears, Knight muttered, with his hoofs covering his tufted ears. Okay, everyone, calm down, Vix Lee snapped, twirling her hammer in her hands, although which one Rex was not sure, as they were both exactly the same, a fact he only noticed now. Okay, the jungle cat doesn't have the best track record, but who does? She also said she has a plan to get us out of here, and as I like being alive, I say we listen to her. Thank you, Vittle said, flashing a grin before holding out the map. 
revealing it was a top-down view of Canterlot in its entirety. She showed them a path from their current location down to the lower west. I know of a few sub-guard houses that won't ask too many questions provided we bribe them, and we can get out of Canterlot easily within a few. Wait, I can't go, Windbreaker said with concern on his face. I'm a hatchery griffin. They'll track me down in an instant if we leave. For that matter, they could track me now. <sighs> Windbreaker hissed, rolling up the map and bending it before letting out a very annoyed sigh. Okay, we have to make a massive detour to the east side, as I know someone that can remove the tracker on you. Wait, really? Windbreaker looked like an excited chick right then, eyes wide with his coat and plumage standing upright. I think, to be fair, Viddle said, placed, pacing back and forth. They're known for being the best ID forgers. If they can't get hatchery griffins out, then I'd be surprised. So, once we get to this corrupt guardhouse, pay them off. How well can we get to from here to where in the east? Knight asked, blinking slowly as he cracked his golden eyes open a bit more. It's in the east-south quarter, the lowest to be exact, Vittle said, which made them all wince. That would require them to basically travel the entire circumference of Canterlot, and to the exact opposite of where they were, while being targeted by this foe that the entity called Balance warned them of. It's really out of the way, I know, but if you need a clean set of papers, they're the ones to go to, and they'll stay quiet about us. How can you be so certain of their silence? Rex asked, as the group finally began to move forward. Because if our foe does become in charge of the power of the equestrian government, I can foresee large bounties on our heads. Because it would be horrid business practice, Viddle said, leading them through the winding back ways. They have dirt on everyone, and everyone is aware of their practice. If someone squeals on them, everyone goes up, and everyone will know who talked, and... Trust me, there will be blood to pay. That makes sense, Vixley said with a grin on her face. No tour will break the peace, because I'm fairly sure there's no way to teleport from Canterlot to the frontiers, right? <sniffs> Vittle shook her head, smiling back. That's not far enough. You'd need to hide in Mainchuria at least to be somewhat safe, because again, a big part of the black market relies on them and they reach across Equestria, the Quan Mitzel Kingdom, the Minos Islands, and a few other lands. You seem to know a great deal about this underworld, Knight said, before looking at Rex and blushing slightly, r running his right wing over his face. No offense. None taken, Rex said, pleasantly surprised that some dog was actually considerate enough to remember the under existed. They were almost at the end of the the alleyway, with the sun in their face, when the Aoizotalis's eyes went wide. Gah! Vittle swore, before pouncing on night. Give me that now. What in the blazing moon are you doing? Knight swore, staggering as she held his right wing out forcefully. Let go of me! Your signet ring, we need to get rid of it, Vittle snapped, placing her head next to his face. It stands out like a capactily at a sea pony family reunion. Baring his teeth, knife, Knight pushed her off of him and eased the right wing off of his root. Eased the ring off of his wing and placed it in his saddlebag, flexing his wing and glaring darkly at Vittle. You could have asked, Page Turner said, eyes narrowed, instead of tackling him, you know. I overreacted. Sue me, Vittle shot back, before running a hand through her hair. I'm sorry, but this whole threat on my life has got me pretty rattled. I'm kinda used to not worrying about my life, you know? Yes, I do, Page Turner said. Rex turned his head as Windbreaker got into another coughing fit, which he resolved by taking out a bottle from his bags and starting to drink heavily from it. 
Windbreaker finished off the bottle before placing it back into his pack and pulled back as everyone was looking at him. What? I get money back if I bring in the bottle. Is this going to be a recurring problem? Rex asked, turning to the griffin with a raised eyebrow. We will not need to worry about an intoxicated griffin stumbling about when stealth would be preferable. I don't have a drinking problem, Windbreaker coughed, rubbing his throat. He then let out a sigh. I just need to be buzzed to be fine. Tch! Knight snorted, rolling his eyes. This is serious, and I'd rather not have my life in the hooves of some pony who cannot stand upright. As I said, I just need to be buzzed and I'll be fine, Windbreaker snapped as he walked ahead of them, Talon in front of Talon in front of Paul, in a straight line. See, I'm good. He had the unfortunate luck to let out a hiccup right then. That does not fill me with any confidence, to be fair, Rex said, with Vittle, Vixley, and Page Turner sharing nods of agreement. Perhaps you can moderate your alcohol consumption? I don't need to do so, Windbreaker said, rubbing his throat and glaring off to the side. I don't need to change myself, he muttered angrily to himself, rubbing his throat again. Look, Wind, Vittle hopped over to the griffin. We're going to need to be able to move quickly, and we can't do that if you're passed out drunk. Frankly, I'd be really at ease if you tossed the whole thing away, but I can't do that to an addict. I'm not an ad- Windbreaker tried to shout, but was quieted when the Minotaur placed her hand over his beak. Hey, look, we can hash out your drinking problems you might have later. She ignored the glare from the griffin, but kept a tight enough grip to keep him from saying anything. But Vittle's right. We need to get going as soon as we can, and we don't want to get any more attention than a drunken griffin, a thieving owie zodal, a grumpy grump bat pony, a non-nerdy librarian unicorn, a smarty vest double D, and a very strong minotaur altogether already does. Everyone gave her a flat look, with Paige muttering about if she should take that as an insult or not, and Windbreaker pulling away and starting to rub his beak. Okay. Annoying point made. Shall we move on? Knight asked, tilting his head towards the exit of the alley. With a series of agreement sounds, and Vittle leading the group once more, they finally left the alley. Part 2. Windbreaker. So, what is the plan? he asked, clicking his beak to get some more feeling into it. That minotaur was strong. He wanted to go check a mirror to make sure it wasn't cracked or something. Well, we need to get to West North Quarter and get to one of the subgates, probably on Pants Street, as it is almost always a sure thing to be ignored by guards. A shameful fate for one of the warrior's greatest devotees, Knight said, shaking his head, telling Windbreaker that the pony was one of the few nobles that didn't follow the lady. He was still squinting his eyes when the diamond dog next to him pulled out a squat jar from a pocket on his vest and hoofed it over, saying it was a nice cream that would dull the pain for his eyes. As I was saying, we should go through a subgate, go to near the Cantigal Canal, Canal, find a good place to cross it, continue to make our way to the east-south quarter, get out of Canterlot, and then figure out what we need to do next. That's it? Windbreaker asked, tilting his head at her, as Knight returned the jar to Rex, muttering his thanks. I mean, how will we pay off the guard, or manage to get through the middle and lower for however long it takes us to get through them? Or what should we do when, you know, we get out of Canterlot? I'm going to guess Knight has enough money on him so that we can use that to bribe the guard. We move during the day as long as we are in the middle, and then night in the lower. We use what money we have left to pay off the forger, we get out of Canterlot, and then try to get more of those element things to pop up, and then deal with the big bad thing after us," Vittle said, as she used her tail hand to tap Paige's necklace. You should really hide that. It stands out far too much. As she took it off and placed it in Knight's bag, she flicked her eyes at the Owie's Odal. 
Wouldn't it be better if we go in the night until we get out of Canterlot? No, as they'd be expecting that, and it would be more suspicious for whatever we call ourselves to be out at night trying not to attract attention. She shook her head, turning to get onto Pants Street. Middle ponies want to seem like upper ponies, so they'll not mention anything unusual as long as we look like we should be there. The lower doesn't care much, from what I've heard. Just enough to protect its own, and having a bunch of us wandering around about in the day would attract attention, which might get attention dragged onto others, and they wouldn't like that, so they'd take precautions. Makes sense, Vixley said, after a period of time, before slightly bumping into Page Turner with a smile on her face. So, can you explain what the necklace thing it was? I mean, it kind of appeared when you kissed that little buggy, right, Wendy? Oh. Windbreaker blinked before turning to look at him, with Windbreaker shooting a glare at Vix Lee, before nodding to confirm what she said. Well, according to Balance and Fluttershy, it's the element of kindness, as I'm the new bearer of kindness. Who's Fluttershy? Knight asked her, shaking his hoof as he had stepped in a rotten veggie. It seemed that Vittel was right about this street being abandoned, with all the littering and the amount of graffiti. Windbreaker had to stifle a snicker when night went, all wide-eyed, as they passed a particularly trashed statue of the famous Pants General of the Elite Fifty that was with King Blueblood when the royal stallion killed Chrysalis. "'She's the stern warden,' Paige said, with a bit of a twitch in her voice. "'Kinda, I mean. Balance told me that she never liked the title, as it made her seem scarier than she really was.' But wasn't she the one that trapped a demon into the body of a bunny? Vixley asked with disbelief in her voice. You actually believe that story? Paige asked with a giggle in her mouth. I mean, it is in most of the stories of the stern wart Fluttershy. But I just can't believe it, and I don't bother to tell it to the foals I read to, as it is too ridiculous. I mean, a demon bunny named Angel? That caused her and everyone to laugh a bit. Okay, fair enough, Pagey, Vixley said, stretching her arms above her head, with Wind noticing that she had some muscle mass on her. He was briefly curious as to how strong she was, when the next thing the Minotaur said caused his brain to skip a step. So, does that mean we're the new Virtuous Six? Every pony froze with that. At that, with that fact that they were, now, the new demi deities dropped in their laps so roughly. Finally, Rex spoke up. If I were to wait, if I were one to wager, I would place diamonds to anything that you, Nightblade, are to be the new warrior. Thank you, Rex, Knight said weakly as he bit his lip. And I'd think you'd be the new magi of the stars, Rex, because of how smart you are, Wind said, wondering which of them he would end up replacing. A kind statement, but one I highly doubt, as I do not possess any magic beyond the background magic that you, Vix Lee, and Vittel have. Rex then tilted his head. I am quite curious as to who will fill that role, as I am more than certain that simply possessing the most magic is not the requirement. Well, maybe you're the wise oracle? Vix Lee asked with a bit of a laugh. And here's to think most of the Tars back home thought I'd never amount to anything. I'd rather wait to celebrate until we have got through the gatehouse, Vittel said, casting a look over her shoulder, picking up a coin with her tail hand. Although, I'm kinda curious if it would be wrong for me to try and exploit the whole religious system if we did become recognized as the new virtues. I think profiting off of a religion is a definition of wrong, Windbreaker said, with Paige following. Was she actually th frowning? Was she actually thinking of it? Not if you're the stallion of dedication, Vixley said, twirling her hammer again. I think you could weasel it out that you're just following your former element thingy. Now there's an idea, Vittle grinned as she licked her lips, with Windbreaker rolling his eyes. And I'm sure they can't have a hatchery griffin be one of their virtues. You might just be able to guilt them out of pay paying your debt off. I don't know. They might not hold the whole break 
They might hold the whole breaking the tracker against me, Windbreaker said with a shrug, not truly believing the government would just give him a blank pass. Well, as Vittel said, we should wait until we get past the gatehouse and a bit further into the middle before patting ourselves on the back, Knight said as he reached for his shoulder saddle bag as they had reached the gatehouse at the end of Pant Street. I feel that I'm going to regret giving my wealth to an admitted thief, but I suppose it would be better if you had the money to bribe the guard. I'd be offended if it weren't true, Vittel said absent-mindedly as she went through the bag pocketing the money. So guys, let me do the talking and we should be fine. All right, that's the end of the chapter. I'm thinking about it. I don't think I have anything to say. I'm just going to sign off now. Uh, see you all next time. Hope you had fun. Bye.